Hey guys, it's Shane again, here to bring you another Digimon review and recap. Today's episode is episode 7, That Boy is Joe Keto. So, as we uh, start these episodes, they always do a small little recap. And we get a recap of what happened last time with Sora, Tai, and the gang meeting up with Mimi and Palmon. Which resulted in them fighting Tusmon, Dromojamon, and fending off Ogremon. On top of Koshiro giving them information about what's going on in the real world. Uh, we meet up with our group uh, as they're having a little snack and a little tea thanks to Palmon. And it turns out they finally reached the ocean. So as Tai and Sora with Agumon on top of Bergamon try to go across the ocean to see if they can find this continent that they were told to find by the Holy Digimon. They are attacked from underneath the water. They don't know what's going on. Apparently, something just doesn't want them flying there. And Sora falls off, then Bergemon is hit. Suddenly, as they're trying to swim away, you know, these large tentacles are coming after them. We see a familiar face, if you've seen Digimon before, and Goemon, who comes up with his marching fishes to get them across to the shore. So once our group meets up with Goemon, he brings them back to a little shack area. To a little shack area where they are uh they're they're properly introduced to one another and Goemon knows that they're the chosen children because he has his own partner who is of course Joe Keto and instantly you get a different feel from Joe he seems very uh like he has a lot on his mind like many like a maniac trying to figure out what to do and questioning a lot of things but uh, Joe turns out to be, I believe, a year or two ahead of the, the group, so he's their senpai. And while the children are trying to get to this continent because they're the chosen, Joe's like, well, you know, what's going to happen when we get there? Can we get home? I have exams to study for. My, everybody in my family is a doctor. I have, I have so much to do. I have too many rivals. You know, he's slamming against the little enclosure, which ends up collapsing because he's banging his head and doing all this other stuff. And a little side note, if you guys didn't know, studying for exams and everything in Japan is really rigorous. If you know any anybody that's going to law school or med school and you've seen how rigorous it is for them, it's very, very, very competitive in Japan, even from an early age, such as sixth grade, which is what Joe's in. He's trying to do well now so he can do well in high school, so he can do well and college, or should I say university, so a lot weighing on the shoulders, on top of wondering how they're going to get home, and he believes there's really not much he can add to it, uh, he kind of shuns, I don't want to say shuns Goemon, but kind of is a little bit off-putting with Goemon, telling him that we're not really partners, which you instantly makes you feel some kind of way, I personally... <sighs> This Joe is very different from the first Joe. Like, the first Joe, he would always question and come up with ideas, and he would be the he would be the secondary brains guy, but he's very reliable. That's his whole thing, is reliability. It's just this one seemed very, uh, I hate to say he seemed realistic, but he's a little bit more realistic because you get the feel for how much stuff he has on his mind. And we get a little flash flash into the real world where we see uh, Ty's mother and his sister Ky uh, Kyrie, Kari, sorry, Kari, and outages in Tokyo are starting to spread further and further. Actually, his home, the lights go off and the TV stays on. Kind of spooky, right? Then we get Koshiro on top of Kabuterimon still trying to make their way into the digital world through the net, and they're seeing everything that's going on, and they're trying to hurry up so they can all get together and do what is needed for them to protect this world. Well, should I say the human world? And let me see. I got a couple of notes here. Let me show. Don't miss anything. Goemon does tell them that the Digimon that they're up against now is called Gesamon, and Gesamon tends to attack anything that tries to cross the water. So this is kind of our first taste of a Digimon that isn't being controlled. We still don't know if Ogamon's being controlled, but. Mm, that's up for debate. I want to see how much different things are going to be than from the original show. So, Goemon is trying to encourage Joe to go with them. 
And the rest of the kids are just, they understand. You know, Joe doesn't want to do it. It's fine. They're not going to force him to. So, the so, uh, Bergamon slash Piomon got hurt. They're going to try to lure Gessamon to the shore and attack him on the shore and on, on uh, dry land, so to speak. And Gomon comes up and says, you know what? Joe has a lot on his mind. I know it seems like he's just trying to focus on studying, but he's thinking about all these other things. And so, I'm going to help you guys on behalf of him. And Gomon becomes the bait. And Joe is hearing all this on the side from behind the rock. And Goldman does a good job learning Gessamon and Gessamon is attacking. He's finding these black orbs, which I thought were originally supposed to be ink. But when you see them impact on the Digimon, they kind of just disperse. Maybe they're supposed to be like digital ink. I don't know, but keep that in mind for later. And he's about to reach the shore, but Gessamon gets to him, flings him. Onto the uh, sandy shore. Guess I'm still up here. Uh, Joe comes in and picks him up. And is trying to. Be like you know. Come on man. You don't get hurt. And the other children in Digimon. Save for Piyomon. Because Piyomon is still hurt. Uh, Togemon. We get Togemon. We get Agumon turned to Greymon. And they're unable to do too much. Because Guess I'm on is able to get back in the ocean and still kicking their butts, wrapping them, you know, wrapping them up in his tentacles, and Togemon is fully submerged, and Greymon is trying to get free. And during this moment, we get Goemon and Joe talking, and Joe's trying to figure out, you know, why would you do this? And Goemon just says, hey, I've been waiting for you, you know, we're supposed to be partners, and I was so happy to meet you. And Joe, and one of the good things they do is since, you know, we don't have several episodes to show each individual child and how they how they built a relationship with their Digimon, we get little flashbacks of when Joe first got there, Goemon, bringing him to the structure, giving him food, giving him enough room so he can study, because when they first meet Joe, he's actually studying, and he's still studying. And Joe tends to realize, well, you know what? It's thanks to you I was able to get a little bit of studying done and have some peaceful moments and Goldmon reminds him you aren't going to have to do this alone you have Ty and the others and you got me and once they once Joe fully says I'm your partner not just you're my partner I'm your partner that's when his sign of reliability if you've seen the first Digimon series before it glows on his Digivice Goldmon Digivolves and the Ikakumon and with Ikakumon He's able to attack Gessamon when he goes under the water. Ends up just straight up ramming him with that giant horn of his. And even when Gessamon's trying to retreat, you know, the horn becomes Harpoon Vulcan, a.k.a. Harpoon Torpedo. Hits him. They get him on land. Everybody's able to gang up on him. And even as he's trying to retreat, Ikakumon hits him two more times with Harpoon Torpedo. And... Once Gekko Gekko Mon, once Gekko Mon is hit hard enough, kind of spurts out ink, I guess, to show that he's defeated, which is just weird, because I didn't think he had ink since those black balls weren't ink, but apparently they were. And now they're, you know, Joe is with them, they got the resolve, they're going to get on top of Gekko Mon and just travel across the sea and see what they're finding. And Joe is, of course, trying to tell them, I'm older, so, you know, just try to listen to me and he flops. Everybody say he flops. He falls into the water. You get a funny moment. And with our flashback, we finally, finally get to see Yamato again. So, looks like they're going to reach their destination. And Yamato might be a little bit more knowledgeable as to what's going on. Uh, this is the first time in all of these episodes. And this is episode 7. First time in 7 episodes that we just get one, we get like one new Digimon. Not including the uh, digital partner in this evolution. Uh, just some notes after we go over some of this. Um, I believe we're going to see Dark Tyrannomon and Gorillamon in the next episode. Hopefully, I didn't see Go uh, Gabumon, so hopefully something didn't happen to Gabumon, but we'll find out next week. The he's so Joe is. I hate to say he's worse than OG Joe, but I can see what they're going for because Joe was always worried about things to be the reliable one, and that's what they were pushing. 
the first time we see him in the first series. But this one's really showing like how these things are weighing on him. And honestly, in today's society, especially in Japan, Japan had a large, they had a large, uh, I hate to say epidemic, but had a large epidemic of a lot of people who commit suicide because of the pressures of work and the pressures of trying to get higher up in the social chain and get into good schools and things of that nature. So this is kind of a reflection of that. Um, the evolution for Agumon, while it still looks amazing, was much faster. The evolution for Togemon, for Palmon and Togemon, was quick. And the evolution for Gomon, while it did look nice, for some reason they still don't compare to Agumon. I don't know if Tai is supposed to be the main character, or if this is a case of we spent all our budget on this one thing, so we can't do it all the same. Because even if you look in the uh, intro, Ty's the only one where Greymon is showing that he's going to turn into Metal Greymon. Then we get a flash of War Greymon. So I'm, I'm interested in seeing why there's a lot of importance on Ty. I don't know if he's supposed to be their Red Ranger or if he's supposed to be... Because, yeah, you know, in, in a lot of uh, Sentai, maybe not in Power Rangers, but in a lot of Sentai, the Red Ranger, since he's the leader, there's a lot of importance placed on, these, on the character from time to time. Like, everybody gets their own moment to shine, but there's usually something really special about that leader, and it gets explained throughout the series. I'm wondering if this is the kind of approach they're going to have with Ty. Um, I do like the idea of, you know, these partner Digimon have been waiting for them, and they know they've been waiting for them. They don't know why they've been waiting for them, but they know they've been waiting for them. And the fact that, you know, they're just happy to finally live out their destiny and to meet who they're supposed to meet that's i i do like them bringing out that idea that they are very loyal to the very end um i think i might have covered everything that i wanted to cover with it yeah i covered everything i want to cover with this is so with uh how would i out of five because I'm, I actually just, well, usually when I do these, actually not usually, for all of these that I've done, I've watched the episode immediately right before. This one I kind of took about 20, 30 minutes because I had other things I had to do. And plus there was some noise that I could not control. Now that's quieter, I'm able to talk to you guys. Out of five, I'm... <sighs> I'll give it a four. I give it a four only because, because I said it, I will start judging these harshly when we get to ten. At the same time, I can appreciate the flashbacks that they give. You may think it's kind of cheap that we don't get a full episode with people in the back, but is and we get to focus on just these two meeting each other. But that does require a lot. And remember, we are going through a global situation right now, so the fact that they were able to get back in there get a couple more episodes out because I know they were actually done up to episode I want to say five and they were able to get back in there and finish up some of these episodes so I appreciate them actually showing that you know Mimi and Joe showed up sometime before Ty and Sora and they were probably deeper into the digital world than they were so that means their time spent with their partner Digimon was a lot longer than we are, excuse me, able to see on screen. Um, I had, I had something on my mind, I just forgot it. Another thing that is somewhat interesting, no, I already touched on that. I was going to touch on again how Joe felt all this stress, which is really good they did that. Another thing, just remembered it, other than Koshiro, Koshiro's coming to meet them. It's actually one of the few times where I've seen like animes where people are supposed to gather together and the initial group is usually one uh, one young lady or one lady with them. To see that it's Tai, Mimi, and Sora and that Sora and Mimi, them and their partner Digimon have much more of a role. Because if you remember in the first series, in addition to the children kind of stepping back and the Digimon stepping up, a lot of the female characters didn't really get much do, if that makes any sense. Like, you would focus on them, but it would be so much more of the emotional side, right? 
even yeah, the boys have their emotional stuff too, usually Joe and Koshiro, but it was usually really emotional with the ladies, especially with Sora, given that her uh her whole crest thing was love, but in this one she's very determined. She's a loving person, but I feel like they are getting more uh more respected than they did originally when things first showed up and things first started. So I'm going to be looking forward to seeing if once we get the OG6 together to see how much more, uh, for lack of better words, how much more respect and how much more time they're going to get dedicated to the, to their characters and their Digimon. Because it looks like it's kind of equal, which is, again, why I'm kind of confused on why it seems like Ty is the... Uh, Red Ranger of this group because they're giving everybody equal time and it doesn't seem like anybody's less important than anybody else. But you heard it here. I'm giving this one a four again. I know I've given the last couple fours, but it, it's it's warranted. I'm hoping that when I get to ten, things are just gonna keep taking off, and hopefully I won't have to judge this harshly. Hopefully we get to see more Digimon because just seeing one, I was hoping we would see at least two or three other ocean digimon but it is what it is remember guys to please hit the like button if you aren't a subscriber please subscribe hit the notification bell share the video tell me what you think down below are you still enjoying the show like i am what uh what other ocean digimon if you're into digimon what other ocean digimon are you looking forward to seeing besides you know we've seen waymon we've seen taylormon we've seen Gessamon, and of course goemon and kakumon so who are you looking forward to seeing next? Personally, I am hoping that they show some of the new Digimon that are going to appear in the latest uh, digital pack they come out, the Pendulum Z. So, who knows? Well, guys, be good, be blessed. I'll talk to you next time.